Hello, здравейте, bonjour. Today I'm going to talk to you about a different aspect of language, which uh, natural language programming, natural language processing is. Uh, I'm going to review a course that I have been taking for one year and I actually just finished. The thing is, I am very interested in machine translation and natural language processing. However, my master's degree was simply computing or even computing for people who graduated from something else. So as you can tell, it was really quite general. So what I did was I took this, uh, I, I took this one year long module from Soft Uni, which is an institution, educational institution um, based in Bulgaria, but mostly online and right now fully online. The module consisted of uh, four separate courses, math concepts for developers, uh, data science, machine learning, and finally, deep learning. I am now com way, way more confident in my knowledge in these fields uh, and I feel like I can really do research linked to natural language processing and of course uh, the topic that I am mo most interested in, which is um, machine translation, which is what Google Translate does, for example. So during this course we had four hour lectures once a week. The lecturer was amazing, at the same time a genius and super kind, which is a rare and lovely combination. And to be honest, I would not listen to the lecture live, but rather I would um, play it 1.5 speed later. Since time management has been uh, problematic for me and for everyone else from um, what I learned. Then there was most of the time there was also some homework to do and most importantly there was a big project at the end of every course, every you know every one of the four parts. This project was like a research paper but not as rigorous because obviously we were just beginning work in the respective field. Um, yes, and then we had uh, following the submission of these projects, we also had a short Viva Voce with the lecturer and we were graded. Um, an interesting fact is that I almost slept through the viva voce of uh, the final project, the most important project, because you see I had spent over 10 days working intensely on neural networks and all, but I did not take the time difference between France and Bulgaria into consideration. So I had to run down the stairs and it was fine, I was like two minutes late only. I thought I was waking up an hour early to have all the time in the world to prepare. Okay, now I'm going to go through my four projects, which all received excellent grades and were a lot of fun, in all honesty. Uh, they were tough to do. Uh, there were moments when I was really feeling stressed out because although I have experience with writing research papers, this was so different because it involved code. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, work was um, done using Python. Um, so it's really, I had never being faced with the reality of this has to work, this just objectively has to work. When you're writing a research paper linked to literature or language learning, this is not the case. You, you can just end up feeling confident or less confident with different elements of what you've written. But here it just had to work. You're literally pressing a button and it will compile or it won't or it will have errors. 
and if it has errors you have to go back with full understanding of everything you've been doing everything the computer has been thinking you've been doing and fix the mistakes or if you cannot fix the mistakes just leave it all together and do something else I will certainly try not to bore you with these projects. I'm just going to give you an overview of what I did. Uh, this is the first one for the um, Math Concepts uh, course. Here, basically, I played with uh, some basic elements of natural language processing, uh, the model uh, NLTK in Python. I used uh, the text of the Raven by Poe and its translations into French and Russian. So I tokenized the, te the text, that is to say I divided it into words in all languages. Well, um, then I found the number of uh, characters in each of the versions and then an average number of characters per word in them. Uh, then I... What did I do? I stemmed the words. Like I removed any sort of uh, prefixes and uh, suffixes that I have. These are already functions within Python, by the way. Uh, yeah, so I did that in all languages. Then I did some lemmatization or looking for the root of a word. And I made a table to check how many of the words in each language were in fact changed by me applying the, this function. If many words were changed, this means it worked well. Many words were reduced to their root. Alright, and... Yeah, this goes on and on with all texts. Plus, I tried two different algorithms, two, two different functions that are present in Python. And trying to evaluate which one works best. Uh, also, I try to see how many of the words are not present in the dictionary, which means they were reduced to a root that is no longer a dictionary word. Um, all right, yeah, that's that's basically it. I tried to do, yeah, with the Russian dictionary, it didn't even work because of the decoding of uh, the Syriac alphabet, but that's fine. It was perfectly fine to even try something that doesn't work. We were encouraged to just leave it there. Okay, um, then. This was math uh, concepts for developers, which dealt with so many things like um, vectors, matrices, um, angles, cosines, all these things were pretty hard for me, but we were encouraged to focus on what interests us personally. So I was happy to discover the beginning of what would be my research into natural language processing. Then, data science, which is really 80% of the work when it comes to machine learning. Uh, in data science, that's when you gather data, that's when you organize the data into data frames. Um, we get the different entries of data, but we also have the different features by which we can compare the data. We do feature selection, feature engineering, if we come up with the features ourselves. So here what I did was I talked about Hemingway and Faulkner's fight about who is who is a better writer. Faulkner claiming that Hemingway is not as good of a writer because he uses very simple words. And on his part, Hemingway is saying that it's sad that Faulkner thinks that big words are so important and that it is them that measure how good a piece of writing is. Yeah, so what I did here is I used a couple of texts by both authors. I made sure they're the same size. 
uh, and then I did feature engineering. I thought of some features that can make one evaluate how complicated text is. So there's a number of sentences, there is a number of characters per sentence, words per sentence, unique words that are not repeated, the proportion of unique words. Um, what else did I do? Uh, again, it all required tokenizing into words, into sentences as well. I shaped this into a little table. I continued adding characteristics. I did part of speech tagging, which shows what part of speech a certain word is. Again, it's a ready function. Uh, I looked for adjectives in particular, also in the variety of tags, how many different parts of speech I used by both authors. So the table is getting a bit larger. I did some visualizations of sentence structures, um, a bit of, um, yeah, this is again like a tree, tree shape visualization, the leaves being the the separate words. This is like a, a grammar visualization of the way the grammar of a language is. Uh, yes, number of prepositional phrases as a measure of complicated language. And this was my table by the end. That my hypothesis, which was that Faulkner's writing was more complex as such, was not supported in any way. Actually, even the contrary showed. But that's fine. That's really just uh, uh, playing with these features. It is not 100% certain that they were the best features one could be looking at, nor the be best text samples one could be looking at. Um, yes, some more visualization, some random sentences, and then being turned into a, a tree showing their grammar. Okay, moving on to the next one, machine learning. Machine learning is really the artificial intelligence thing. This is when a computer with experience gets to learn something with uh, lots of data, in other words. Um, for instance, it can be used for guessing something. For example, guessing the price of a flat given certain of characteristics of the flat and comparing it to other flats for which we already know their prices. Uh, and then we, we also have things like classification. For instance, um, a type of flower based on the features of a flower, its um, leaves, the way it, its angles, the way it looks, its color, different types of characteristics, features. Uh, the computer algorithm can guess what kind of flower it is, given a, a set choice of flowers. So again, going back to Faulkner and Hemingway, this time it sounds a bit more boring, but it's actually quite complex compared to what I had done with just with the data. Uh, here, the algorithm tries to guess if a certain sentence is from Hemingway or from Faulkner. So I got the complete works of the two authors. I got some samples of them, again a data table which had the author and each sentence of all these sentences. Uh, again, of course, the data had to be worked with beforehand or pre-processed as it's called, uh, tokenized into words in, uh, in addition to being tokenized into sentences already. There's some visualizations of the most used words. Here a good thing is to remove the so-called stop words or very often used words like uh, the pronouns or particles. And then I tried several different algorithms for training the data. Um, again, some common vocabulary. There's some the scores. SVM, another machine learning algorithm. And basically it was a comparison of how well each of these algorithms does the job of predicting correctly who the author of a given sentence is. And then I added again 
work in progress that I wasn't confident with, that's more linked to the next part, neural networks, which are deeper networks through which computers can learn. I'll show you this last one now. All right. So here, this, this was not linked to Faulkner and Hemingway now. This was just a simple translation algorithm. It sounds very simple, but it actually acquired a lot of training. Uh, I used some ready dictionaries, which were based on the sentence um, as a unit, uh, French and English sentences that are fed into the algorithms. And these are big, big algorithms. That's the difference between machine learning and what that was the last course, deep learning or neural networks. It's just that uh, the algorithm is much larger and the inner parts of it, we don't even know what they do practically. Uh, the more insight you can earn into what is happening, the better. But I did not get to understand everything about what's going on. And, and yet I spent a lot of time on it and I really felt my knowledge building in and feeling satisfaction with this. Okay, so data loading, observations about the data. This is always needed. Uh, making sure the samples are of equal length. Pre-processing again, tokenizing and so on. Um, turning words into, basically the computer cannot make any sense of words. So they have to be turned into numerical values based on the whole vocabulary or all the words that are being used. There are different ways to do that. Uh, yes, pre-processing and then the different neural models. Simple RNN, bidirectional RNN. And a bit like in the case with the previous project, just comparing the results, seeing where they are best. And once I got the best results, I felt that I could. I went on to tuning the algorithm, making sure some little changes in the parameters could be applied in order to achieve the best performance possible. Then evaluating the model visualizations, of course. Okay, I won't bore you anymore. That's what I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I will be happy to talk more about machine learning and natural language processing, machine translation in the future. If you have any questions that are not super complex on the topic, please feel free to leave a comment. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye bye.